Well, yeah, well, welcome guys again for my herbal classes. So, um, yeah, blessed to be able to speak to you guys and have you guys here to listen and hopefully be blessed by some info I'm going to share today. So today, class five, <clears throat> um, these are going by so quick, it seems like it's like already class five, but we're talking about cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. Um, I'm actually probably going to talk a little bit more about the lymphatic system than I am the cardiovascular system. Um, most people are familiar with the cardiovascular system and know nothing about the lymphatic system, but it's actually said by a lot of people the lymphatic system could be more important than the cardiovascular system. That could come as a surprise, even though how important the blood and the heart, and we know how important that is, but once you understand more what the lymphatic system is, its purpose, its role, you'll see why it's so important. So, but I'm going to talk about both, and I'll get to the herbs at the end, but I always like to give an idea of what's going on in these systems and why they're so important and how they can get messed up before I go through the herbs. I think that's the, you know, I've always felt like that's the most important and the, the best way to go to give you the full picture of stuff. So, yeah, everybody familiar with the heart, our veins, our arteries, right? Who knows very much about the lymphatic system? Very many people? A little bit, yeah. People have heard about it. You do, all right. It needs to be cleaned out. Yes, amen. <laughs> um, it's crazy, and so I'll get into some details. Um, I, I'm not going to go through it, like I said, a ton, ton on the cardiovascular system, also because, A, people are real familiar. I will talk a little bit about it, but also Vaughn is going to do a whole class on cardiovascular disease, the cause, some myths, and how to, how to work on that. So... Um, but I will, I will talk about it a little bit, and I'll give the basic points and the main things and the main herbs to help with, with the cardiovascular system as well as the lymphatic system. So um, anyway, I've always learned that the body, we have two major fluid systems, blood and lymph. And most people don't understand how much lymph fluid you have. Um, it's crazy. We just think about all the, all the blood, but they're super critical for life. Um, and when you look about it at the, at the cellular level, you have blood that brings the oxygen and the nutrients to the cell, the capillaries go to the cell, and on the other side, you have the capillaries and the lymph um, vessels that take away the waste and remove the waste. So you have the life force bringing it in, you have to have the other side working good to remove the cellular waste. Um, a lot of people understand we have digestive waste, right, because we eat, we consume, and we eliminate, and we have to. Um, that happens at a cellular level, level too. So 100 trillion cells, roughly, um, they don't know exactly, but roughly 100 trillion cells, that happens at the cellular level too. They're like a little city to themselves, working at a smaller level at the same way we do at a larger level. So they consume oxygen, nutrients, carbohydrates. Um, they consume, they process, and then they eliminate. So where does that eliminate two. You got a hundred trillion cells eliminating stuff. It eliminates into the lymphatic system and your lymphatic system is like the sewer system of your body. Um, your, like your septic tank in your house. When you go to the bathroom and you flush the toilet, it goes out to the septic tank. And so that can be likened to your lymph nodes. Um, so I'll break that down a little bit more, but it's just crazy how the medical industry doesn't hasn't addressed the lymphatic system that much. I mean, you go back way, I put a little note in here about Hippocrates, way back in 400 BC, talking about the lymphatic system, talking about its importance. I mean, he talked about the cardiovascular system too. Um, but he, he understood to some degree um, the importance of it. And it just got kind of lost along the way. And as medical stuff has gone on, we've really only wanted to recognize the blood and, and the importance of that. And it is super important in keeping that clean. And we'll talk about that too. But... Um, yeah, and, and just until recently, science has really started to look at that and go, oh my gosh, what have we been missing out on? And doing all this research and realizing how much, I mean, I've heard over and over again that um, the more and more research they do, you have more lymph fluid in your body than you do blood. You have more lymph vessels than you do capillaries, veins, arteries, which is just crazy to think about. When I first started hearing about that, I just... I just sat there like jaw dropped almost like, what? How have I not known more about this important system and its, and its importance? So, um, but yeah, modern medicine is, and scientists are studying that, especially in the last decade and coming up with 
realizing how important it is and, and starting to emphasize it more even though the medical industry doesn't really talk about it fully. So, and again, I always like to break down the complex to the, to the simplistic so that we can understand it. Because um, there's a lot of complex things going on in the body and how amazing God and intricately God created our bodies to work perfectly um, if we treat it perfectly, if we treat it right. But um, in simplistic speaking, we're a bunch of cells, 100 trillion cells, bathed in fluid. Um, the two fluid systems, blood and lymph. So um, again, that's where your, your cells take in and they eliminate. Um, yeah, this is where the exchange of nutrients and waste go. And, and it's, it's interesting to note that some of the capillaries that go to the cell are so small that red blood cells have to go single file. They can't even be next to each other. And if you understand how small a red blood cell is, to have to go single file, that's how small some of these capillaries are. So you can understand really quickly that if you aren't eating properly, you're eating toxic things, you're eating fatty things that are getting into the bloodstream that aren't supposed to be there, they can easily clog those. Your cells aren't getting fed, aka they're dying. They're going to get, they could easily get diseased if there is such thing as disease. I talked about it in the first class. There really isn't anything that like disease doesn't really exist. It's just a cell that is weakened, um, dying, not healthy. Where that cell ends up having that weakened, diseased, or dead state therefore terms the disease. Um, but you bring health back to that cell, you bring nutrients back to that cell, you allow that cell to eliminate, the disease goes away. Um, it's actually very simple. And I've seen it time and time again, and people, people healing themselves. So, um, yeah, let's talk about the cardiovascular system a little bit. Because it is so important, and it talks about in the Bible, I put a reference in here, Leviticus 17.11, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Um, we know how important that is. I mean, we have a heart that, um, that pumps blood, and we know how, heart, how important it is to have our heart working right. Because if your heart's not working, if it's not pumping those vital oxygen nutrients to the body, you die, and you die pretty quick. Um, and that's why we have a, a heart, to pump that stuff constantly through the body. We'll get to why the lymphatic system doesn't have a pump, so we've got to do other things to move your lymphatic system. But, so the heart... The main, main part of, uh, or one of the main parts of the cardiovascular system pumps blood through the whole body. Um, cardiovascular system is a network of over 100,000 miles of vessels. Again, they don't know the exact number, but that's a, a rough idea. Just to, just to give you an idea of what that looks like, if you stretched all of them out end to end, 100,000 miles of stuff. And like I said, you, you potentially, and a lot of people say for sure, have more lymph vessels than cardiovascular vessels. So... Um, yeah, and the blood carries the life force of your body. It carries the oxygen. When you breathe in, you breathe in that healthy air, hopefully, not full of other stuff. But you get that oxygen into the lungs, which goes into the blood and goes to the cells. That's initially, you know, ultimately what, what we're doing. And then you, when you eat, your nutrition goes into the blood, goes to the cells. So, yeah, it's the life force. It's, it's also transporting hormones and enzymes and antioxidants and all sorts of things that get released into the bloodstream and ultimately go to the cells. So again, if those passageways get clogged, get blocked all the way, those capillaries, you can't get those nutrients, you can't get that oxygen to those cells and they ultimately suffer and, and die. Um, so heart disease is, is super at an all-time high right now. I mean, um, I think I've mentioned before, I used to sell supplemental health insurance. I sold cancer policies. I sold heart disease policies to people that would go above and beyond supplemental to their normal insurance because of how important and detrimental it is to people. Um, but I, I knew back then that heart disease was the number one killer in America and, and cancer was number two. But they've actually done studies recently. And if you guys go back to the notes in my first class, I put some statistics in there that actually show that actually modern medicine is the number one killer in the world or in the U.S. Maybe it's just the U.S., I don't know. Probably in the world too, but surgeries and and um, chemotherapy treatments and um, just medicine, prescription medicines are more damaging and killing more people than even 
cancer is or that even in cardiovascular. But heart disease is still way up there. It said, I put some stats in here, that one out of every two and a half deaths in the U.S. is from heart disease. That's just crazy. Um, every 29 seconds, an American will suffer a coronary event, and every minute, someone will die of a, of a heart, a coronary issue. So it's super crazy. And when you do research back in the 1900s, heart disease killed, on average, about one in seven Americans. So that's still a big deal, one in seven. But um, by 1963, it was almost one in two. And that's about you know, roughly where we're at. Some people say a little more, a little less right now. But it's that important. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's the life force of our body. And we've got to keep it clean. We've got we to gotta take care of it. Um, it's also called, heart disease is called the silent killer because a lot of times you don't, it doesn't manifest a symptom um, until it's too late, until something serious happens. And so we don't want to wait until, we're not meant to just live however we want to live and wait until something bad happens and then address it. We want to be in line with the way God created us so we're living healthy in all areas of our life so that nothing bad ever does happen. Um, prevention, not medicine always is about after the fact. What do we do? And their results are uh, subpar, if even that. So um, I talk a lot about acidosis and the dangers of being acidic in the body because we're meant to be more alkaline. Um, even the earth was basically 80% alkaline, forming minerals and stuff on the earth and 20% acid. So it should be about the same. We're formed out of the dust of the earth. We're about the same, need about the same thing, about 80% alkaline forming stuff. And we need the acid forming stuff too because they're very vital for digestion for certain things. But if you're too acidic, acidity causes um, lack of oxygen to the cells because pH is actually the potential of hydrogen. The more hydrogen there is, the less oxygen there is um, normally. So... It causes a lower oxygenation when you're acidic. It causes inflammation. It causes um, acids are, are strong. They create change. You know, we need to be, an alkaline environment is oxygenated. It's for the repairing, the rejuvenative side of things. So, um, but anyway, this is taken out of the textbook of medical physiology. It says the normal pH of arterial blood is 7.4. Um, and so a lot of my textbooks and stuff that I've understand, your blood has to be so close in pH all the time. It can't change very much or you'll die. So this textbook talked about um, the, the limit and the value of that you can drop acidically um, and live for no more than a few hours is about 6.8. So it's not even very much difference. If you go much below that and for very much time, you die. Your blood has to be a certain thing. So your body... Ultimately, if you eat an acidic diet, your body will do things to make sure that blood stays at that thing or you'll die. So it will take, um, one of the main things it does is it takes minerals. For example, calcium. Calcium is a very alkalizing mineral. So it'll pull calcium out of the bones, out of the arterial walls, out of wherever it can. It'll pull minerals into the blood to alkalize it because your body's always trying to keep you alive intelligent wisdom that God created in, in us that it's always trying to heal everything it's doing it's trying to heal and keep you in the best health possible we talked about you know a little example with arthritis and poisons and toxins and acids in the body your body tries to push it as far away out from the organs so that it's not damaging to your main organs and it'll put arthritis and acid buildups in the joints way far away from you know in your toes and your hands way away from the main part of your body uh, the intelligent wisdom behind that. So, um, yeah, and I put some examples in here just because it's, it's interesting. Like I said, we need to be consuming primarily alkalizing foods. And so, um, and like I said, the blood, and I don't know how familiar you guys are with pH, but the lower the number, the more acidic. The higher the number, the more alkaline. So it goes from 0 to 14, 7 being neutral. And the blood has to stay right around 7.4. So when we're consuming things like Coke, Pepsi, you know, they've, they've studied that and they have a pH of about 2.5 to 3. That's really acidic. So it takes a lot to, I think one time I heard, and I'm not a detail guy, but it, it takes like several gallons of water to offset one can of soda, the, the pH, the acidity. Um, mm, yeah, it may be true. Same thing for coffee. Same thing for well, coffee, yeah. It's not as much, but... But it is acidic. Yeah, absolutely. 
So in Gatorade, people are drinking this Gatorade, thinking it's hydrating them, it's good for them, and they say Gatorade has about 2.8, very acidic. You know, the National Football League apparently came out recently and, and, and did studies on it and said, we can't be giving this stuff to our guys anymore, it's not good for them. They're finally coming around and realizing, you know, but it used to be the big thing, but they've taken certain principles of being good of having electrolyte minerals, but then they've thrown all sorts of sugars and processed colors and artificial ingredients in there to make it very acidic. So, um, and so to compare these numbers to like hydrochloric acid, that's the stomach acid that we secrete to break down especially proteins, um, is about 1.8 to 2. It's very acidic, but it's pretty close to those other things. Um, and then battery acid is probably in your mind that, that on a day-to-day -day basis thing, the thing you can think of that would be the most acidic. We know if you get battery acid on your hand, it will burn you. It, will, it could eat through your skin. Um, people that work on a car and get some on their hand, they, it can burn, and you need to wash it off really quick, or it can eat through. That's the power of acids, but battery acid is around one. Um, and chemotherapy that they're giving people to treat cancer, we're going to treat a damaged cell by putting in a super acid thing to kill everything. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense to me, but um, chemotherapy is about 1.5 to 2.2 pH. So, and the, they've done studies now that show that the chemotherapy kills more people than the actual cancer does, but I'm not here to get into all that drama, but um, anyway, God created us a certain way and a certain way to keep the body healthy, so we need to always focus on that. Um, and like I said, the body will, is, is very smart. It'll do everything it, it can to balance these acids to, I mean, it's actually very intelligent for it. If it can't excrete toxins and poisons, to put them in the joints farthest away, in the areas farthest away from the main organs. Um, you know, ultimately you can reverse all of that, but um, yeah, it will pull out. The, the main things it uses to alkalize, especially the blood, is calcium, um, and it will use cholesterol. So cholesterol is a very misunderstood thing. Um, I'm not going to go super into depth of that because Vaughn's going to break it down very well. He probably understands it better than I do, but cholesterol is actually important. Every cell actually has cholesterol in it. You need cholesterol for your brain. Your body produces cholesterol to, um, for, stero or for uh, hormones, all sorts of things. And your body will actually use cholesterol to buffer acids and, and inflammation in the cardiovascular system. So if you're eating a certain diet and it's damaging the walls of, um, and you're too acidic, it's going to pull in and make more cholesterol. And it's going to patch those parts of the arterial walls. It's actually your body trying to heal itself. Um, and then, we're, and then the, the medical industry wants us to take drugs to stop the production of cholesterol. That's actually stopping your body doing what... That's not ever the fix. The fix is changing our diet. When you alkalize, when you start cleansing, your body will clear out all of that cholesterol buildup, all that plaque stuff. You'll go back to normal. We've seen it time and time again. Um, so the main things that cause cardiovascular damage... Um, Acidosis, like we talked about, eating an acidic diet, um, having an acidic lifestyle, um, toxicity, refined and complex sugars are very hard on the, on, the, on the cardiovascular system. I've heard it said, like, if you eat a processed or refined sugar and it goes straight into the bloodstream, it's like shards of glass just, um, you know, damaging the inside of your walls, and then your body has to go and repair that. Otherwise, if it doesn't, you'll blow a vessel and you'll, you'll die. Um, so it has to repair that with something, a.k.a. calcium and cholesterol. Um, lack of nutrients and minerals, that's actually very important. Um, you know, in today's world, we don't have as many nutrients and minerals in our foods. Um, that's why we talk about herbs. That's why we talk about minerals and stuff, because they're, they're, they're real potent. Um, and a backed up lymphatic system can actually cause the blood to become more, more toxic. Because if your body, if your cells can't ultimately eliminate into the lymphatic system, it's going to back up into the blood, cause stuff in the blood that's not supposed to be there. So, um, yeah, I'll get into the very end some lifestyle suggestions, but um, that gives you a brief idea on what, what the best or what the main causes for cardiovascular damage is. Um, so now I want to get into the lymphatic system. Explaining that a little bit more in depth, and then, I'll, and then I'll get into the herbs. We'll get rock and rolling on some herbs. Let me get a quick drink, because I always get dry mouth when I'm talking. So 
So the great lymphatic system is, as I've heard it called, so I put it in here, because it is. It's so crazy. The more and more I understand about it, how amazing it is. Um, so the lymph system contains lymph fluid, lymph vessels, lymph nodes. The spleen and the thymus gland are also very important parts of the lymphatic system. So, and it is said that by some people that the lymph is actually the major fluid compared to the blood um, and consists of two-thirds to three-fourths of the major fluid in your body compared to blood. So that's just crazy to think about that you have more lymph fluid than, than blood. And your body has between 500 and 600 lymph nodes. We all know about if a lymph node get, it's, gets inflamed, right? You know, when you're out here, or, uh, your tonsils are actually lymph nodes. You have them under your armpits. I mean, I put in here where the heaviest concentration in the neck, the groin, the chest, the abdomen, underarms, um, right in your groin area, you can, you can feel them, um, lymph nodes. And I've had them get inflamed before, too. And so you know when they get inflamed. But 500 to 600, all throughout the body, you can pull up charts of the lymphatic system and it's got vessels and nodes everywhere throughout the whole body. It looks like the cardiovascular system, but people don't talk about it. So, um, it's the major sewer system. Like I said, if you, it's the one that's excreting the waste. I like to compare it to a house. Like I said, if you go to the bathroom in the house, in the toilet, and you flush, that's like your lymphatic system getting rid of it. And then it eventually goes to the uh, septic tank, which is usually out under the ground somewhere, like the lymph nodes in your body. And that's usually where a bunch of bacteria is and stuff, and it's supposed to be because it's breaking down these toxic things. It's uh, consuming disease cells, it's consuming um, bacteria, and then ultimately flowing out and flowing on. Um, so yeah, we're actually supposed to have bacteria in our, our white blood cells and different things in our lymphatic system. The lymphatic system is, is actually the main part of your immune system too. It's where a lot of your white blood cells get produced and get, get put in there because they're, they're dealing with these things and the waste. Um, so it's interesting, have any of you gotten your tonsils taken out or heard of people? Yeah. Um, they're, they're actually important parts of your lymphatic system. And in back however long ago, until just recently, they didn't realize that. So it's, that's like the equivalent of in your house, like, oh, if your, if your uh, septic tank gets backed up, let's just, uh, let's just cut it out and not do anything with it. Well, that would be really stupid, because if any of you understand a house and how that works, your sewer stuff would get all into your, into your yard and could back up into your toilet and into your house. And that's what happens in your body, your house being your cell. So that, that waste doesn't have anywhere to go anymore, and it, it, it'll back up. It, the cell will get congested, and it'll get into the blood. And So that would be a dumb idea. Why not just clean out the sewer system? Why not clean out that septic tank? Because once you clean it, everything can move freely again. And that's what we need to get back to. Um, just doing that. So let's see here. Yeah, of course, the blood carries the nutrition and the lymph removes everything else. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, the cells in the lymph nodes, like I said, the bacteria and the white blood cells and all sorts of things that are more complex than I fully understand, but they're in the, in the lymphatic system, in the lymph nodes, to ingest impurities, digest bacteria, old red blood cells, toxic and cellular waste, and eventually what will happen, and this is a debatable thing too, but the medical industry thinks that your lymph system, now that they're understanding, dumps back into your blood, but um, that's just crazy thinking too because your blood can't be toxic. Your blood can't... But it's actually, um, other people that have studied it, it dumps back into the kidneys a lot of times, and your kidneys will get rid of it. So kidneys are a big part of your elimination. They're the main filtration. I'm going to do a class, I think maybe next week, on kidneys and the liver. Kidneys are the main filter and organ in the body, and they're necessary for eliminating. But so many people, you know, you have hundreds and thousands of little filters in your kidney, and if they're not functioning properly, that gets backed up too. So that's an important part of eliminating the, through the lymphatic system. Um, again, the blood has a heart. We have a big heart. It's about the size of our fist, and it pumps blood through the whole body to make sure we're getting those nutrients. So what moves the lymph? Anybody know? Hmm? Osmosis. Osmosis. It's a good guess. I mean, contraction of muscles. Contraction of muscles um, is the main thing that moves the lymph. So... You know, we were, we were meant to, we were designed to be active. You know, contraction of muscles, um, especially vigorous exercise, that, 
that stimulates the lymphatic system. It moves the lymphatic system. Movement moves the lymphatic system. There's no pump. So if you're a sedentary lifestyle and sitting all the time and not moving, your lymph ain't moving very well. And it's going to get stagnant. It's going to get backed up. It's going to clog those cells. And that's a huge part of disease, like we talked about it. So hopefully this is kind of painting a big picture for you on, on what happens at the cellular level. Um, so we have to be moving. And certain foods are really powerful for moving the lymphatic system too. And certain herbs, like I'm going to talk about, very powerful for moving, stimulating movement in the lymphatic system. Um, you know, some of, some of the best foods are very astringent for moving, moving lymph, like lemons. Lemons are very cleansing. We know that in general, but they're very powerful for moving the lymphatic system too. Um, same with grapes. I've heard crazy stories about grapes. Um, cleansing people, healing people, moving their lymph. People with lymphoma cancers just going on a grape fast and being gone in a month or two. Just clearing everything out of there. Grapes are powerful. Uh, but yeah, lemons, you know, greens are very good for you too. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about that more later. But yeah, these are things that all, all assist and then some powerful herbs. But we have to, the main thing is we have to be moving. I know it's hard sometimes in our lives though. We need to, we need to make time for these important things. Because movement so good for, for everything, for your brain, for your cardiovascular system. It's like it all works together. God created it that way. Um, so it's important to keep this lymphatic system moving, otherwise that, that toxic waste builds up. It backs up, backs up to the cell, damages that cell, and causes issues. So it's like if you're in your house and your, your, your toilet overflows, and it just keeps overflowing. It overflows in your whole house. How, how good would your health be very soon? Wouldn't be very good. <laughs> and it would be a prime environment for what? Bacteria, viruses, parasites. All these little things would show up, you know? <laughs> yeah, you don't want that. So, and a lot of times, you know, people are seeing this bacteria, these viruses, this parasites, and we do need to get rid of them. But um, what's happening first to cause that? You know, it's mucus buildup, it's toxin buildup, it's all of that. So you clean out. The, build, the, the, the backup, it cleans out other things too. And, and it, you know, in a good alkaline environment, lymphatic system clean, everything, you can't even, it's not even a good environment for those things to thrive in. They, they can't. You know, they've shown that people that are healthy and alkaline and, and clean like that like, never get sick, basically, because um, they're so cleaned out. So, um, yeah, those... Those toxins and poisons and parasites, they thrive in an acidic environment, in a congested environment. That's their job, to clean things. Something dies out on the road. Stuff goes there. It's meant to. God created to clean those things up, and it's part of the life cycle. So we don't want that going on inside of our bodies. Um, the main causes of congested and clogged lymphatic system, like I mentioned, lack of exercise and inactive lifestyle. Impacted bowels can actually be a big thing too. We eat food and we've talked about cleansing and detoxing in the last class. You can go back to that, but the bowels can get impacted and that can affect the lymphatic system too. Congested kidneys and skin. Um, if your kidneys aren't working right, your body will then try to go to the skin. So it causes a lot of skin conditions, basically the lymph and the blood being congested because your body's gonna do everything it can to get these toxins out. So a lot of skin conditions, acne, psoriasis, eczema. It's your body just trying to get rid of stuff. And then the doctors want to put a cream on that's going to stop it. Those toxins are just going to go somewhere else and create something else. So, um, yeah, the skin needs to be, be healthy too. Um, I've heard it called the third kidney because it's, it's the largest organ in our body. It's the skin. And you sweat, you excrete things. You, you know, it's a whole talk I could get into on deodorants too because we're trying to stop the body doing something. Of course, we don't want to stink. But the cleaner you are, the less you actually stink. But then also you can put things on that are actually absorbent will help pull. It's going to help your body do what it's trying to do. But people are putting poisons under their arm. It's stopping the excretion of toxins and poisons. And then it's also introducing poisons into these big uh, pores where your lymphatic system is. It's causing breast cancer and all sorts of other things. So, um, Yeah, so low blood pressure... Um, I talked about in the first class, I think, being linked to the adrenal glands. So um, that's a, a factor that can cause your lymph to 
get backed up because if the blood's not flowing properly, if you don't have the right pressure in the blood system, it does affect, they're very highly linked to the lymphatic system. They work super hand in hand. And the overconsumption of proteins, acid, and mucus forming substances clogs, gets this, you know, the lymphatic system should be kind of a uh, clear to whitish liquid. It's a little thicker than blood, but some people's I've heard it gets so thick and can actually get so, it can get locked up and actually get hard in the, you know, because it's so like stagnant, not moving. That's not good. So milk, a lot of the processed milks of today's world, very mucus forming, very congesting, complex and processed sugars, very bad, you know, grains, processed grains are, are very bad um, for it too. I mean, some of these things done right are okay, but um, the main milk, the main processed sugars, the main processed grains are, are very bad for that stuff. So these will burden the lymph system, um, causing it to become congested and stagnant. So, yeah. Does that kind of give you guys a good idea of the lymph system? Hopefully I shed some light on understanding that. <clears throat> um, and I encourage you to do some more of your own research too. But let's get into these herbs because they're awesome. I love herbs. They're powerful. They're the most powerful things we can put in our bodies. You know, um, to cause, cause change, to cause healing, to cause regeneration, you know, on top of just our normal foods that we eat. But So herbs for the circulatory system I'll go through first. Bilberry. Um, not a lot of people know about bilberry, but it is a berry. I don't know where it grows naturally, but <laughs> some of these things I just, I'm getting more into wanting to grow them myself and learning how to grow them because that's ultimately the best way. But yeah, bilberry, it's a tremendous strengthener of the vascular system, the arteries, the capillaries, the veins. It's great for varicose veins. Um, helps reduce inflammation. So, of course, it reduces arterial sclerosis. Um, inhibits the coagulation of platelets in the blood. It's been known a lot to protect the eye tissue. So basically the eye, just a bunch of cells, bathed in fluid, two systems, blood and lymph. So if they get congested, can't get the right proper nutrients to them, can't excrete properly, what happens? Glaucoma, um, all the other things that happen with eye stuff. So bilberry's been shown to help with eye stuff. Um, it's just good for the circulatory system. Anywhere those capillaries get clogged, lymph gets backed up, cells can't get nutrients, you have issues. So uh, butcher's broom, this is another great circulatory or herb, very anti-inflammatory, helps reduce plaque buildup in the, in the art artery walls, um, increases circulation, especially I've heard to the peripheral areas, the skin, the, the hands, the feet, the brain, that type of stuff. So um, helps tone and strengthen the vascular wall and, and thus good for varicose veins, hemorrhoids, that type of stuff. So a lot of these are going to have the same theme, but they all work a little differently. So, um, you know, somebody that really wants to attack this stuff, I like formulas that have a blend of them, blend of herbs, because they're going to work synergistically, they're going to work in different ways to take together. So you can get herbal liquid formulas that are the, probably the strongest way to take them. Minimal digestion, very strong. You can do pills that are already formulated with a blend of herbs, or you can just buy them in bulk and separately and mix them yourself. Um, so that would be suggestions for somebody that really wants to attack it. But cayenne, I could probably spend an hour just talking about cayenne and all the crazy benefits of cayenne, but very powerful for circulation. <clears throat> we all know cayenne's hot, you know. Um, but it, yeah, it's, it's very powerful for removing circulation. It can be warming in the body because of the circulation. You have cold hands and feet, get you a little cayenne, it'll warm you up. I've even heard people in cold, cold climates put cayenne pepper in their socks and wear them, and it brings circulation to the feet. So I haven't tried it, but it works. Yeah. Nice. Maybe this winter. I don't like cold, so I'm going to put cayenne all over. You know, <laughs> that might not be smart, but <laughs> there are some sensitive areas you don't want cayenne in. Um, just saying. It's used in high blood pressure cases because it, it vasodilates, which means it opens up the blood flow, the veins, the capillaries, the arteries, makes blood flow easier, so it actually lowers blood pressure, it increases circulation. Um, cayenne's a wonderful herb, it's so good, and it's used in a lot of formulas because it makes other herbs more effective because of its um, circulatory part. So you take it with another herb and it boosts circulation, it gets those nutrients everywhere quicker. Um, yeah, and a cool story about cayenne too is, you think about it, it's, it seems opposite, but it 
increases circulation. But what it also does is it will stop blood flow in an area where it's not supposed to have blood flow, um, like a cut, internal bleeding. You take it internally, you have internal bleeding, it will stop, it will like basically kind of cauterize that wound. Externally, same thing. You get a cut, you put some cayenne, it might burn, but it will do the trick. There's a story I heard of a guy out in Oregon or somewhere on the West Coast and his buddy was using a chainsaw, I think it was, and like cut his arm or cut his leg like off um, or almost all the way off. And so they, he didn't know what to do and they didn't have anything. They called an ambulance and it was going to be like 30 minutes. He went and ran and got a bottle of cayenne, poured it all over that thing. And so the paramedics showed up going, what the heck are you doing? What were you thinking? Later, they come back to him and tell him, you know, if you didn't do that, he would have died. Like, what you did actually stopped the blood. Like, they were so blown away about it that they started carrying cayenne in their ambulance. Um, crazy stuff. So anyway, but cayenne, very powerful for circulation. I won't get on too much tangents, but <laughs> cool story. Ginger. Ginger is a great herb you can eat all the time. It's a very a warming remedy, again, because of the circulation benefit. Um, very good to the peripheral areas as well, the brain, hands, and feet. Um, it's very good for aiding in the cleansing and elimination of congestion and mucus, so it helps cleanse the system of that stuff. Um, lowers cholesterol and blood pressure, also helps prevent blood clotting. Um, we know it's good for digestion and a lot of things, so um, ginger, great thing to add in on a daily basis or, or once in a while. So I love making a tea with fresh ginger, and um, it's very good for you. So ginkgo biloba. Ginkgo biloba is a tree and leaves of the tree are very beneficial. So it's one of the best herbs for the brain and the nervous system because it's effect to uh, promote blood flow, especially to the brain and the nervous system. Um, but it, 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 you know, it's good for blood flow in the whole body. Um, so again, it's going to be good for helping the vascular system clear out, um, good for memory loss, good for vertigo because it's, it's blood flow to the brain. Um, yeah, good for fibromyalgia, hemorrhoids, spider veins, varicose veins, all that stuff. So, um, but yeah, especially for somebody that wants better brain function, it's a great herb for that. Same with the next one, go to cola. Very powerful. Uh, it's considered one of God's finest herbs for brain and nerve regeneration because of its, again, it's, it's blood flow to the brain and um, it's used for a lot of spinal cord injury stuff and actually people have used that and different things to actually help regenerate the nerves, regenerate the spinal cord, people getting reconnected and they haven't moved in 20 years and getting movement back, so um, great for that. <clears throat> Hawthorn berry is considered one of the great heart herbs, so very good for the heart. It's loaded with flavonoids and antioxidants that are super beneficial. A lot of berries are just loaded with antioxidants and these flavonoids that do different things, so tons of berries are really good for you. Elderberry, shisandra berry, blueberries, you know, goji berries, you hear about all these acai berries. Different berries grow all around the world and have awesome benefits. But yeah, this one's specific to known to affect the heart. Um, increases circulation, it strengthens, it um, helps remove acids and inflammation from the body, from the blood. So, hence putting less burden on the heart. Um, but it also has some, some powerful nutrients in it to, to nourish the heart and help it work more efficiently. Um, so that's a must for anybody with heart issues and wanting to keep the heart strong. Horse chestnut. Um, another one of God's great circulatory herbs. Um, yeah, great for all the, all the issues of the cardiovascular system. Plaque buildup, varicose veins, spider veins. All that stuff is a weakened vessels. So this, this helps, helps bring blood flow. It reduces swelling. It's a strong astringent, so it helps remove toxins. Um, you know, very good for arthritis, it's known, because of its, again, blood flow and removing toxins. Blood flow to the outer parts and helping remove toxins. So, witch hazel I put on your last, a um, little bit different than the other ones. It's, it's very astringent. Um, it's known for astringent, kind of like tightening and pulling action on stuff. So, um, but it's, it's, it's one that's probably one of the most well-known for like varicose veins and, and spider veins and stuff like that. So, um, it will stop bleeding internally and externally too, kind of like cayenne. Um, so yeah, another good one to add in there. So then I got some herbs on here for blood cleansing and blood building. 
because having the blood clean, having it strong, having it, the more red blood cells we have, the more oxygen carrying capacity we have, the more efficient the cardiovascular system is, the better you can get those nutrients and oxygen to those cells. So um, this is very important. And burdock root, I talked a lot about in the last class just because it's cleansing in general, but it has a, um, a strong effect on the blood, cleansing the blood. And when the lymph gets backed up, it affects the blood and your body has to resort to other things. So this is very powerful for cleansing the whole body, but especially the blood. It does increase circulation to the skin. Um, and actually one of the main things that burdock root is known for is as a wound healer, uh, or a burn healer, I mean. It's one of the top, if you get burned, like aloe vera and burdock are like what you want to put on your skin. Um, can heal super fast, but it's also no known for um, skin conditions because of its blood cleansing ability and bringing circulation to the skin. The cleaner the blood is, the less your body has to resort to pushing out toxins through the skin. Red beets. <clears throat> this is interesting because you juice a beet and it looks like blood. Um, but it happens to be good for, very good for the blood. Purifying the blood. Um, I used to love, and I need to get back to it, I haven't juiced that many beets lately, but making a little beet juice with, I mean, you can make a simple recipe, apple, beet, carrot, or add some lime, or add some, whatever, some greens in there, and it's super good. It actually tastes good. It's sweet. It's got a little earthy flavor to it, um, but very good for increasing the red blood cell count, cleansing the blood, so it's boosting. A lot of, like, athletes got into it, which is where I had first heard about it, is people were using it before and after workouts, because it boost your oxygen ability, so therefore you can work out longer, you can get less tired, um, but very good for circulation, yeah, again, building, cleansing the blood. And you can eat it on a daily basis, or you can juice it, or you can, you can use it a ton of ways. People shred it, put it on salads, <clears throat> people ferment it, um, all that good stuff. Plantain. Plantain is one, another one you could talk about for a thousand different things, but... Um, it's very astringent, also pulling and cleansing, so it does impact the blood and the lymphatic system. Um, very anti-inflammatory, very healing. Yeah, it's blood and lymph cleansing, very good for skin conditions because it's effect on that. But yeah, I mean, I listed a bunch of things that it's known to be good for, and um, plantain grows naturally no, almost anywhere around here. Most people have it in their yards. Um, I wouldn't necessarily trust it if you spray it around your yard, but, uh, but yeah, it can be found pretty ready to, readily available around here. Same with red clover, the next one. <clears throat> red clover's got a long medical history of being used, but mainly as a blood purifier, blood cleanser, strengthener of the liver as well, um, and red blood cells. So again, anything that's a blood cleanser is going to be good for the skin. So it's very good for skin conditions. A lot of, like, we have, we have a, acne and eczema formulas here, and they got blood cleansing herbs in them, along with other stuff too, but um, it's very important with anything that you figure out what the root of it is, because, you know, again, with, with a skin condition, it's not a failure of the skin, something, it's actually your body trying to do something, so let's get to the root of it and cleanse out the lymph and the blood and what's really going on, and then that clears everything up. <clears throat> White oak. White oak, I talked about in the last class too, like a lot of, they found a lot of uh, really powerful herbs or, or, or I don't know what you call them, but are the barks of trees. Because the bark of the tree is meant to protect the tree from outside invaders, from, from everything. It's protecting, so um, cleansing. But yeah, white oak, the bark, is a tremendous herb that's great for cleansing the whole body, very astringent, um, increases lymphatic flow, very good for swollen lymph nodes, does cleanse the blood. So some of these in between are kind of both blood cleansing and lymph cleansing. Um, but a must for like, yeah, strengthening cells, somebody that's got tumors, boils, anything like that, um, would definitely use, use this to help clean that up and same with skin conditions. Yellow dock is another one that's really great for the blood and the liver. Um, yellow dock is very high in iron. Also, so people can drink yellow dock tea, get a lot of iron. A lot of women that have heavy cycles or, um, or such, they, they can use yellow dock and get extra iron. It builds the blood, it cleanses the blood, it moves the lymph, it um, 
promotes liver function, increases the oxygen car carrying capacity of the blood. So um, a very good herb, and it's used for a lot of things. It kind of smells a little funny, but, <laughs> but, um, but very powerful. So yeah, and then getting into the herbs for the lymphatic system. Um, I talked about some of these last class, but it's a little bit more comprehensive list for, for the lymphatic system. So chaparral, uh, a wonderful herb for, especially it grows up here in the northern hemisphere. Some of these herbs we have to get from other countries, other parts of the world, but um, this grows here in, in America. It's got a real powerful effect on moving the lymphatic system. So like I said, I mean, we need to be active to move the lymphatic system, but herbs like this can be very powerful for from moving the lymphatic system. So when the lymphatic system's stagnant, again, cells die, cells get weak, that causes whatever you want to call it, cancers, tumors, all sorts of things. So um, these would be like a must for anybody that's going through that type of stuff. So good for rheumatic and arthritic stuff too because if it's cleansing stuff out. Stimulates liver function, anti-inflammatory, strengthener of all cells. Um, that's the cool thing about herbs is you can take them and unlike a pharmaceutical, or chemotherapy or something that's going to damage your whole body might help a little with whatever you've got going on. It might make it worse. But um, herbs, they have, we call them, instead of side effects, they have side benefits. So not only do they help for whatever you want to take them with, it can help build the blood, cleanse the blood, but it's actually going to help other parts of your body too. Um, they always have side benefits on, on their nutrition and their cleansing abilities. So cleavers. It's a great lymphatic herb. It helps move and dissolve lymphatic congestion. So people that are really backed up, you know, this is a great one to help get things going. Swollen lymph nodes, uh, tumors. It's got a great blood cleansing ability too. So great for skin conditions, um, dissolving kidney and bladder sediment too. People are having kidney issues. That can be really powerful for that as well. Echinacea. People mainly know echinacea as like an immune herb because um, it is a fantastic immune herb and I'll get into that in my immune system class a little bit more in depth but it causes your body to produce more white blood cells which are the main part of your, one of your main parts of your immune system um, but it's a great blood and lymphatic cleanser as well so this is a great herb to be teamed with other more powerful lymphatic cleansers because it it, a, it boosts your whole immune system, but then also provides cleansing ability to that. Poke root. So some of these, like poke root, blood root, um, they can be toxic if not used right or, or used in too high of a dose, but um, most of these are, like the poke root, blood root, most times are used in a, in a cream or a salve or something topically. can actually help pull, um, I mean, really it's lymph congestion, but tumors cancers out of the skin, so it's very good for skin issues, tumors on the skin, stuff close to the skin, but can be taken internally. I'm not fully sure how to do that. If someone needed to research more on how to take it internally, but very powerful. Yeah, poke root's considered the tumor buster. Um, one of the best for tumors, encouraging lymphatic flow. Some of the most potent lymphatic herbs are also, um, I mean, they can be toxic in higher levels, but they, they create movement, they create change, and, and in low levels and done right, they can strengthen the whole body, move, cleanse stuff out. Um, so yeah, like I was mentioning, blood root too, very powerful lymphatic stimulator and cleanser. It does cleanse the body of toxins and poisons, but uh, too much of anything can be too much, so a word of caution on some of those. But again, that's used for a lot of breast cancers, warts, other growths, skin cancers, that type of stuff, even used for antiseptic mouthwashes because it's the ability to pull stuff out of the lining of the, the mouth. Um, and then blue vervain, um, well known for detoxifying the body, one of the oldest and most reliable uh, diuretics, so causing the kidneys and causing the body to, to flush out stuff. Um, and again, the kidneys being part of the end result of the lymphatic drainage into the kidneys and kidneys getting it out. So that's one reason why it's really powerful for the lymphatic system. But it does also soothe the nerves. I've heard it, it kind of relaxes, good for muscle spasms, um, insomnia, kidney stones, all that type of stuff. So um, yeah, and again, with any of these, if somebody's really want to go after your lymphatic system, I would do a blend. 
you can do a tea blend, you can do a liquid concentrate blend. Um, I mean, you can use one or the other, but I like the blends best for if you really want to go out after it. Um, or if you just wanted to take for daily use, you can use some of these um, daily, you know. I would stay away from using like the blood root and the poke root and stuff like that more daily, but a lot of these can be used daily at smaller doses and it could just be great to just gently cleanse you. Um, so yeah, now I want to just end with a couple lifestyle suggestions. Um, you know, and I put for the lymphatic and cardiovascular system because that's what we're talking about, but it's almost the same for, I could make the same suggestions for every class and for everything we've got going on because it all goes to the same things. I mean, other than the specific herbs for that, but these are healthy lifestyle suggestions in general. They happen to be good for the heart and the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system too, but eat the foods God created. And I go more in, in depth on that on the first class um, also, but yeah, eat them as close to the way as he created them too. Because you can still take something that God created and alter it and process it and heat it and take stuff out and, and, it, and it doesn't have the same effect. It can actually be damaging to you. So we want to eat things as close to the way God created because he created it that way for a reason. It's got its water, it's got its fiber, it's got its nutrients, it's got its enzymes to break things down um, all together. So we want to try to eat as much raw, unprocessed, whole foods as possible. Um, and minimal animal foods, minimal processed foods. So some animal foods can be, can be fine for you if done in moderation and, and good quality and all that, but it's just really hard to do. And, and I'm more of a believer of, you know, God initially created things. And I got the scripture in here too in Genesis 129. So yeah, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth and every tree whose fruit yields seed to you, it should be for food. That was his initial design. So the closer we get back to that design, the healthier we end up being. Alkalizing. Always alkalize, alkalize for every class. Talk about alkalizing and how important it is. It's, the cause, it's one of the main causes. Back in the first class, I talked about one of the main causes of all sickness, disease, not being healthy. So acidosis, toxicity, um, those would be the main things. Yeah, and, and lack of nutrition. So alkalizing a lot, if you just eat the way God created, you're going to alkalize a lot. But how you speed that up even more, you can, some of the most alkalizing foods on the planet are lemons. For some of you that maybe sounds weird because lemons are acidic by nature. If you test the pH of a lemon, it's actually acidic. But, um, so some of you should do some research on, the, on what foods are, once your body processes them, what is the end result? Because that's ultimately what we're going for. But the minerals, the stuff that's in there, once your body produces it, it creates one of the most alkaline reactions in the body. So, yeah, there's a little confusion with that. And at some point, I'm going to have a chart that I can hand out that talks about what foods are alkalizing, what foods are acidic. Because, you know, something like milk or something you would think would be more alkaline once your body processes it. It's very acidic. Same with meat, very acidic. Process, all, everything processed is usually very acidic. Forming, but lemons are one of the most alkalizing things. Same with grapes, very alkalizing. Greens, very alkalizing. So the darker the green, usually the better. You can make awesome green juices, green smoothies, big salads. I love a big salad, like a huge salad compared to most people. Like a big bowl that's just filled with spinach and kale and other stuff in there. And you can make a nice, healthy, fresh uh, salad dressing too yourself. Cheap, inexpensive, super good for you, and getting those greens in there. And also the greens have a lot of fiber in them, so it's moving stuff through your body. So, um, yeah, and then be active. Be active. We're meant to be active daily, all the time. Our body functions, functions optimally when we are active to some degree on a daily basis. You don't have to go and run for five hours a day, but um, just be active. You know, um, I put in here... Just minimum suggestions. Um, try to do at least 20 to 30 minutes of visit, vigorous exercise three to four times a week or 30 to 40 minutes of low intensity exercise. You can just walk in the mornings or in the evenings and that's great. Um, but yeah, I would do at least 30 or 40 minutes of walking if you're going to do walking. Um, or like I said, at least 20 or 30 minutes of something more vigorous. And at least three or four times a day. 
Again, if you do this stuff daily, it's going to be better. You can't always do that, I understand. So um, at least three or four times a week um, is going to make a big difference for people that aren't doing that. Move the lymph, move the cardiovascular, oxygenate the, the cells. Um, attitude. Attitude is actually super critical, and I mean, I'm not going like, to go way into, in depth about that, but um, Proverbs 23.7 says, For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Our thoughts, our words are very powerful, so speak truth, speak positive things, proclaim truth, and you'll eventually believe them and they'll get into your mindset. Um, but having a healthy attitude, I mean, people that harbor bitterness and negative thoughts, and that can actually cause you to be more acidic and cause certain things physically in your body. Again, we're body, soul, and spirit. They all work together. And leisure, it's really important to rest, take time to talk, pray to God, meditate on the Word. Um, put meditation not in the Eastern sense, but yeah, meditate on the Word. Meditate on your day and, and what you've done and, and how you could have done things better or, or just being thankful, um, you know, and, and sleeping. So... It's an important part of your body's rejuvenating, repairing, regenerating. Um, and then I put some supplements. Whole food supplements are very important in today's world because the foods aren't as readily available. They're not as healthy. They're not as nutritious as they once were. So a whole food supplement can be really important. You know, the herbs we talked about. Um, and then minerals are also another really good suggestion because we're ultimately made out of the dust of the earth. We're made of minerals. We need to have minerals. And... A lot of the foods are very mineral deficient. Um, and then cleansing. So you guys can refer to the last class for more in-depth stuff on cleansing. Your body's cleansing every moment of every day at some degree. But if you're whatever, you're not moving constantly, you're eating certain foods, you want to go deeper cleansing every once in a while or occasionally. Some people say um, by the seasons. Some people say twice a year. Some people say at least once a year. You know, do a deeper cleanse where you add in some more specific cleansing herbs, you do a fast. A fast is actually the most powerful way to cleanse. You can do a juice fast, you can do a water fast, you can do different levels of that. But yeah, and the herbs and stuff can really speed up cleansing, so refer to the last class for all the herbs and suggestions I talked about with that. So um, yeah, and then do some more research on your own about cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. Learn more on your own and, and understand how we can apply that to our daily lifestyle, but hopefully that gives you some idea on that and um, yeah next week I believe I'm talking about kidneys and liver and how important those are to our body's health so yeah thanks guys do you have any questions for me yes So you're asking about grapes and me talking about them being very cleansing and alkalizing. and Yeah, I've heard about them being very powerful and green or red. Does it matter? Um, <clears throat> I've heard that the, like the red seeded grapes are the best. Any grapes are good, I've heard, but especially the darker, the red seeded grapes. A lot of people don't like the seeds in them, but again, going back to Genesis, God created them, the stuff with seeds in them for us. So you can eat and chew up the grapes, or people juice them in it with the seeds and the stems, and it'll juice everything. And any grapes are cleansing and alkalizing and powerful for, for that. So you're asking about sugar. Well, it's just the grape, you know? Yeah. Grapes do have sugar. Um, yeah. So I'm not sure how much I want to go into that, but. Sugars and the right kind of sugars are very important for our body and our cells. It's one of the main things we need is a, a fuel source for the cells. They need energy. Um, I mean, if you're adding a ton of grapes on top of your already diet, that might be too much sugar in your diet, and that may be causing an issue. And for some people that are really sick with uh, candida, fungus, certain infections, <clears throat> I would maybe caution them a little bit on, on the grape juice, stuff like that. But for most people, you could do... Grapes, you could do a meal of grapes instead of something else, or you can, you can juice some of that. But yeah, I mean, some of the juicing is going to cause taking away the fiber. But, um, but I know a lot of people that do use juice, grape juice fast for people and are curing them of cancer like super quick. So 
maybe some more info you would need to go in, into on that, but they are high in sugar. That's not necessarily a bad thing, right. depending on the person and the situation. I've just, been, I've just seen several lists of alkalizing food, and they're, they're so changing. There's some they're di- changing. It's like, uh, yeah, and there's some differing yeah. information out there and opinions, but... Um, in my opinion, grapes are good, and uh, I know several people that, that use them in their practice and have super high success with cleansing people and cancers and some of the most sick of the sick people. So another good resource, just before you guys answer more questions, if you want to know more about the lymphatic system, uh, Dr. Robert Morse, M-O-R-S-E. I study from him. I've mentioned him before. He's been practicing. He's world-renowned. He's been practicing natural health for... Um, I don't know, almost 40 years, and he deals with the worst of the worst cases and has a crazy high success rate with understanding how the body works and getting it to cleanse out. But anyway, he's got a video on YouTube called The Great Lymphatic System. He goes in depth a lot more about it, and um, he's one that I've heard that uses a lot, puts a lot of people on grape juice fast and grape fast and has amazing success with it. So, yes. Um, just to follow up on all that with the good herbs that are good for the lymphatic system, is there is there a procedure then for cleaning out the, the lymphatic system? Um, so yeah, obviously I, you're saying I talked about a lot of herbs and for the lymphatic system, and is there a certain procedure you should go through for doing that? Yeah. Um, that's hard to say. I mean, people can have from years of, of bad diet and bad stuff I mean, if you think of how many miles of lymph fluid you have, it, it can be pretty backed up. So is there a certain procedure? I don't know that I know how to answer that exactly. but um, I guess there's not a flush. There's not a flush, no, because it, it, it's, it's a process. a little bit different than, like I said, the cardiovascular system that pumps very quickly. It's a long term, although doing the fast and using these herbs can get it flowing quicker. So I don't... There is no cookie cutter answer. Everybody's different, and, and how do you know fully, and how backed up you are, and I don't know, but there's certain symptoms that would, um, you know, that you can look at with with some of the stuff we talked about, and um, that that would maybe give you an indication that your lymph is backed up, and but it does take some time for some people. It's not always a. We always want the take this pill and you'll be better in two days. You know, the lymph it will take time. It could take months. It could take um, a year or more for people to really get a cleansing good, but um, you just get on that journey and, and get to cleansing and people will start to feel a lot better, but yeah, it's a journey. That's why we talk about lifestyle changes, not take this herb for two weeks and be better. So, Yes? <clears throat> That's a great question uh, about the grapes and are they organic? Absolutely, I would recommend they be organic and seeded. Would be my recommendation. You know, there's a lot of stuff that could be sprayed on the on the grapes. Um, you know, so main recommendation with all of your fruits and vegetables and stuff is that they be organic. There's certain things that if if I understand for some people money can be an issue buying all organic. Um, so that's one reason why I'm a big fact that we need to get back to growing our own stuff, all that. But um, if money is an issue, there are certain ones, and you can look up that the ones that are least sprayed, least affected, and just wash them really well, that can be okay. But for the most part, I recommend everybody do all organic fruits and vegetables. Hmm? Do you have the uh, handout for the cleansing and detoxing? Things? Yes. So you're, uh, do I have the cleansing, um, the last class's notes? I do, and I can give them to you after we're done uh, for anybody that wants them, they're on our website or those that are watching on YouTube. Um, you can go to the website and I'll, I'll try to provide a link on there too, but spiritofhealthkc.com and under videos, new videos of 2015, you'll find my class series, Herbal Remedies, and it's got the class notes and the videos to all of the classes I've done. So all the previous notes, you can go on there and print them out, and, and, but, I'll, but I'll print you out one when we're done. Yeah, anybody else that wants one too? Any other... Questions? No? All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you coming.